Hi, you're watching TechCrunch TV. My name is Colleen Taylor. Here with me in the studio today is Lincoln Wallen, who is the CTO of DreamWorks Animation. Lincoln, thanks for joining us. Thank you. So you've just recently been, you know, you, you've taken the helm as CTO, but you've been at DreamWorks for a while. Can you talk about what sort of this role change means? Yeah, so I, I joined DreamWorks as the uh, head of research and development, sort of looking after and evolving the tools and software. Um, and uh, yeah, this, this appointment means I now run all of the technology, the infrastructure, data centers, and the corporate side as well as production. Yeah. Great. I think from the, the consumer side, a lot of people who are watching, you know, they, they see the product, the end product of DreamWorks, but um, you know, what, what is that technology side? Yeah, so um, uh, animation is, is heavily based on technology. I mean, we don't use cameras. Uh, we make all of the images using computers. So. Uh, software, hardware, data centers, um, that's the tools for the animator. Um, they paint the pictures and then light them and put them on the screen essentially all using computers. Right. Yeah. And as time has gone on, I mean, this has become so much higher resolution. I mean, when you look at, at uh, just this morning preparing to talk to you, I was, I was looking at software that, that is used in animation and it's from the same guys that make, you know, Fluid Dynamics. I mean, it is Fluid yeah, Dynamics. No, we, Autodesk, we, these big names. That's right. We use a lot of um, uh, techniques that you'd find in engineering, simulation, uh, dynamics, things that make um, uh, particles and explosions and, and things fall apart because, you know, films need to be fun. Um, so, yeah, a lot of that software is used and we use it at scale. So we don't just do one experiment, but, um, you know, if you take the film that's about to come out, Rise of the Guardians, uh, you'll see lots of effects through pretty much the whole movie. So uh, animation certainly got bigger over time. And how much of this is, I, I mentioned Autodesk and these yeah. other third party um, software providers, but how much of what DreamWorks uses do you build in-house? What's your, your technology like? Well, we try, we try to use um, the best that there is because the, you know, we want our movies to be the best. So we use a lot of third party tools from Autodesk and Foundry, SideFX and other companies, even quite small companies. Uh, where they've created something that's really great. But we also invest in our animation tool, the, the actual tool the, the guys use uh, to make the characters move and perform, and, uh, and also rendering and lighting, so the actually, actually painting the images at the end, and a lot of the effects tools we build in, internally, because we need unique things to you know, interest the consumer in our movies. Uh, and we bring out so many movies a year that uh, each one has got to be better than the last one. So. There's a lot of investment in that software. And how much of a proprietary world is animation? Um, you know, the competition between DreamWorks and, and LucasArts, yeah. or, or what's, what's that environment like? I know up here in, in Silicon Valley, there's a lot of sharing, or at least the, yes. um, the pretense yeah. of sharing that goes on yeah. between major technology companies. Is that the same I in think Hollywood? It's, it's, it's a little bit the same. There's, uh, each studio has its own sort of secret source. And we certainly have ours, but there is a lot of sharing, a lot of open sourcing of, of core techniques or, or solutions, which actually just makes everybody's life, uh, lives easier. So there is quite a bit of sharing, and, and a lot of the technologists do move around between the studios as well. So, you know, making great movies is, is really what we're all about. So. What's the next new thing that we can all sort of look forward to? What is like the bee's knees right now when it comes to animation that everyone's obsessed with? Well, we've spent uh, the last few years investing in our animation tools. And um, uh, what, what we really tr went after was to try to get the animator back into the world of, um, of drawing. Because since they left paper some years ago and went into sort of digital uh, production, they've been sort of with keyboard and mouse and the performance of the characters has really come from their ability to sort of navigate, you know, a, a traditional technology stack. Um, but we wanted to get them back into sort of drawing on, on screens. Uh, and we've just about achieved that now. And so some of our movies coming up will start to see the benefits of, of, of getting them to be more creative. And so it's yeah. not paper and pen, but it's, 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 it's an iPad kind of thing? It's or sort what? of, yeah, or a Cintiq tablet or other touchscreen tablets, but they're using a stylus. And uh, the, the, the trick is to be, actually make the characters perform as fast as you can so that when they move the pen, the character moves. And these characters are very complex, much more complex than you find in games. So uh, we need very, very powerful workstations and a lot of silicon to actually make them 
move fast. Can you tell me a bit more about your actual workstations or any numbers about, I mean, when you talk about this power that it all takes? Yeah, so, so one of the biggest changes that we've been working on in the last few years has been to take our, the, the parts of the software that we write and re-architect them to take advantage of um, multi-core platforms. Mm. So they have workstations with 12 or 16 cores now, um, uh, as well as a large amount of memory. And getting all the power out of those cores is actually quite a, a difficult task. So rewriting you know, all of the un underlying libraries and making the software scale has been one of the key goals. And we've achieved that. Um, and that's, that's what we're putting in their hands in, in the next few years. And when you think about DreamWorks as a company, I mean, DreamWorks just has such a big name. But you mm. were saying before it's 2,500 employees, which is not small by any means. It's not a startup. But, but it's, it's not massive, yes. Right. Yeah. How much of those employees are, are engineering or technological? It's, it's about 300. Okay. Um, it's about 100 people sort of looking after our um, uh, infrastructure, databases, servers, storage, network, so hardware engineers, data center engineers, and running the operation as well because it's a 24-7 operation. Um, and uh, uh, about 150, 160 are software engineers, and that can be anything from you know, people writing simulation codes to software engineers writing applications or people writing pipeline codes, so scripting in, in languages like Python. Um, uh, and the rest are in IT, just doing sort of the usual HR corporate um, support. So, and now that you're CTO of the entire company, mm. is that technology arm going That's to expand a bit more or become more important? When you think of DreamWorks, is it a tech company? Is it a media company? What yeah, so I think it's a, uh, it's, it's a really interesting mixture of the two. It is a media company and our product is media, but um, uh, each of the movies is like a startup. Mm. Um, the creatives huh. are, given, are given a sort of free reign to imagine and think about what they want to put on screen without really asking the question, can I do it? And then once they've got that vision in their mind, then they get together with the uh, technologists and the other artists to actually say, well, how are we going to do it? And since we've got three of these startups every year, we've got a very, very furious environment in which people are inventing new techniques, uh, trying things out, and then ultimately you know, using those techniques at scale. So it's a very, very sort of aggressive and uh, risk-taking environment. What's that relationship like between the creatives at DreamWorks and the tech people. It almost it makes me think of, you know, an architect or a designer and then, you know, the builder who's actually doing it and sometimes it's not realistic the expectations. Yeah, the, and the difference is the architect and the builder once they've built the house they actually go away. It's, <laughs> it's a little bit like we're we're living in one room of the house all all the time. So we're right with the people uh -huh. um, that we're building the technology for. So we get to see what works, what doesn't work. Um, you know, when it doesn't work, we definitely know about it. Um, but we also get to understand what they're trying to do. And uh, it's always difficult to have that dialogue to work out what people are trying to do. But we're really, really close to the people that are effectively our customers. And that means we move fast. And um, we also, when we, when we get it right, it's, it's very satisfying to sort of see them working in ways that they'd actually aspired to work. Are there any tools or practices that you use to keep the creatives and the tech people on the same page? Uh, we have lots of meetings um, yeah. and uh, obviously track a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of asks and, and bugs and uh, issues that the artists want addressed. Um, but but more imp most importantly, I think, is simply asking the artists how they want to work. I mean, we try to take the approach in technology in really the same approach they take on the movies, which is, what do I want to see? Mm. Uh, how can I imagine what this will be like? That's how they make the movie. So we try the same. How do, how do you imagine you want to work? And uh, from that vision, we then try and work backwards and build technology that tries to get as close as possible to that vision. And for you, what's hiring like when you're trying to bring on engineers? I know up, yeah. up here in Silicon Valley, it's very challenging for everybody, especially with startups being so um, attractive to a lot of young, talented engineers. Yes. we, we um, we, we have a lot of um, seasoned people that have been sort of round the block and have a lot of experience under their belt, but we also take a lot of people straight out of, out of school, and often they turn out to be the real stars, mm -hmm. the fantastic people coming out of schools. Not easy for us because people think of, of DreamWorks as a movie company rather than a place that is pushing the boundaries of software and hardware and data centers. I mean, we've been doing cloud computing for almost 10 years now, so many of the things that you see out in the technology industry are, 
are just old practices from huh. the point of view of digital media. Yeah. And when you talk about cloud computing, do you put any of your data onto, you know, Amazon or, or into uh, the cloud, or do you run your own data centers? Uh, we, 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 we run some of our own data centers, and we, we render about 20% of our movies in a, in a cloud uh, provided by uh, uh, HP. Okay. Yeah. So uh, th that's, that's a very important part of the process, because we have about 25,000 cores running 24-7 making those images. It's a, it's a massive manufacturing uh, business in that sense. Right. Um, and so what's, what's next for DreamWorks? What's your big sort of mission now that you're CTO? What's, um, what's your next big project? Well, I think because the, uh, the movies push the boundaries of what's possible, each one has to do something that nobody's seen before. Um, we're, we're driven to build technology that actually allows that to happen. Mm -hmm. I think my mission is really to get that technology a little bit uh, further out of the movies and, and more visible to the wider to the wider world, partly because it helps us sort of improve that technology. We have very strong partnerships with major technology companies like Intel and HP and so on, um, uh, Red Hat. But, um, but also because I think uh, it's, you know, media has always driven technology. If you think about companies like NVIDIA and Intel itself, it's, dri it's been driven by games. It's been driven by what consumers want to do on their platforms. Right. In this world of cloud, in this era of cloud, I think uh, we're one of the few media companies that actually uses the cloud aggressively. And I think the techniques we use to make the movies will become widespread in the next five years. Interesting. So it could go the other way. Like I said, Autodesk, you think of its fluid dynamics you know, software being used in a lot of different places. Maybe DreamWorks could be built into the next you know, heart stent or something? I think that's, that's what we're thinking. We're trying to yeah. find sort of like-minded industries where, that have very similar problems, design problems with large sort of digital uh, data sets. And uh, what we try to do is use that power to uh, support the design process. Huh. Um, in our case, it's artists. In the case of aerospace, it may be a designer or an architect, maybe, you know, building a house or looking at uh, how air flows through it. But in all of these cases, you're really doing the same cycle. You're trying to design something to a particular end. Right. And uh, the more compute power you can use, the better that design cycle or the faster that design cycle can be. That's how it goes. Yeah. Well, Lincoln, thank you for coming by TechCrunch TV and talking to us. And keep us posted on everything DreamWorks. Okay, my pleasure. Thanks.